Okay, let's just stay here. Hi everyone, thanks very much for, for having me. So this is the second time I've spoken at both camp, which is, and, and I've got the t-shirt to prove it as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in 2019. Yeah. Yeah, cool. um, all right, so that's good. So just a quick bio. Um, my background is SEO. I've done it for a very long time. And uh, I work for a big French ad group. And I manage the SEO for very big um, Hong Kong brands like AIA and many others. And I've worked in many different niches. Um, so that's what I do. What is this talk? So this talk is all about taking data from Google and then spinning it and then putting it back up to Google and then benefiting from that. Okay? So really, this presentation is about taking data and then indexing it, or basically improving it, and then indexing it, and then getting traffic. So, how does this work? I'm going to give you an example, and then at the end of this, I'll give you some real examples of directories that I've built. So, first off, you need to think of a niche. And for this example, I'm going to use uh, SEO Agency Hong Kong. Okay? So, what we're doing is we're taking all of the uh, GMB's Google My Business uh, profiles and we're going to scrape them and then we're going to spin them and then we're going to put, put them back up on Google. So the first point though is to think about the niche. So maybe just some ideas are solar energy, junk boat rentals, locksmith, plumbers, whatever it is. Whatever niche you're in, this can work and you can get traffic. So let's talk about the process. So step one, okay, there's, there's, uh, there's four steps. Okay? So step one, data scraping. The tool that I recommend is called phantombuster.com and you can get a free account. It's very affordable, it's only like maybe 40 bucks a month, 50 bucks a month. But the app that we need within the application is Google Maps Search Export. And that will then scrape the listings from Google Maps. So the data that we're gonna get from Google Maps and all of the business profiles are, for example, the title of the business, the URL, the ratings, and all of that kind of thing. Everything you see in a Google Map, we can uh, extract and download for our own benefit. So, the niche that I'm gonna do, for example, is Hong Kong SEO agencies. So, on Google Maps, Hong Kong SEO agencies is gonna list all of the businesses which have profiles labeled as Hong Kong SEO ag uh, agencies. And I'm going to scrape all of the uh, businesses which are listed in Hong Kong. So what we do is we copy and paste the URL of the maps, and then we put it in the tool. We launch it manual, and then we click launch. It's really, really, really simple. You just have to watch the video on the site. It takes two seconds, and it's very, very easy to do. So there you can see it's scraping the data. And so far, you see at the bottom of the uh, slide, there's 100 and 120 or so businesses were scraped, which is, which is exactly what we want. And then we can download the CSV file. So this is really like super, super basic stuff. There's nothing complicated here. So step two, data hygiene and data enhancement. So we open up the CSV file in, for example, Google Sheets. And then we have all this information, which is all very useful, like the, like the category, the address, all of that kind of thing. But what we want to do is we want to improve this and add value. And then I'm going to get into the SEO bit about this shortly. So we want to add value to this data that we've just downloaded. So fortunately, we can turn to AI. And for example, ChatGPT can help us with this. What we want to do, and what's missing here, okay, what's missing from this data is in this example, what's missing is the description of the business. We don't know what all of these URLs are. Okay, we know that they're in, like an SEO agency, but we don't know what specialization or their background or whatever. So we need to get that data. And to get that data, there's really three options that, that I see. Maybe there's a fourth option, I don't know. But the three options I see is, number one, you can go to a human being and hire a virtual assistant to manually copy and paste the prompts into ChatGPT4. That's the most basic way of doing it. Okay? The second option is to use an add-on like SheetGPT, which is, which is very nice and works great. Okay? 
And then the third one, which is my favorite, is to write a Python script, which will do this for you. Because with a Python script, and by the way, I can't write a single line of Python, but I use it all day long. Um, I use ChatGPT to write Python scripts for me, and then you can have a file which just has the prompts. So the prompt would be, for example, um, visit this website and write me 80 words on what the website is about. Okay, and then you do that 180 times. Now, why is this important to talk about data hygiene and well, data hygiene? It's important because I write, you know, tens of thousands of words of content every single week using using AI. And what I do is I do um, I basically use AI to generate the content, but I then remove the footprint because the footprint like. The best way to explain the footprint is like an auto prompt on your on your phone. So you know AI just predicts the next obvious word in a chain. So it's really good practice, and this is my personal opinion. It's very good practice to spin that. So so once you've generated the the AI content, it's not good enough. You need to paraphrase it, which is spinning it. And this is for, for those that don't understand that paraphrasing is this. Okay. So I am speaking at, at WordCamp 2023 in Hong Kong. Okay, by the way, this isn't AI. This is, this is really, really, really old technology. But this tool is called Quillbot. It's a very good tool. And it spins it. And it's exactly the same meaning. But the benefit, the benefit about this, what I'm saying, is it makes it more human. Because humans speak in a strange way. Like the way that I speak is unique. The way that you, you all speak is unique. So you need that fingerprint. You need to try and remove the AI obviousness of the content. So um, now we have our spun content. By the way, there's there's 50 slides, so I'm going to talk that fast. Okay. Um, so now we've got our descriptions of our SEO agencies, and then we can just go and create some slugs. Okay. Um, that is, if we want to have individual pages, like a mass page website. Uh, that's what we need to do for that. Right, so now we have our data which has been enhanced and we've got our AI content as well. So data upload, um, for you guys, if anyone technical will find this incredibly simple, and anyone who isn't very technical, please don't be scared because it's simple. Um, the plugins that I've used before, uh, and like I said, I'm gonna give you examples of directories that I've built. So two plugins that I, that I recommend is WP All Imports and WordPress Pods, which is a custom, which is basically like ACF, Advanced Custom Fields. Uh, I just prefer Pods. So the first thing we do is we create a custom post type, which they call a, 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 a pod. And the we create the singular label and the plural label. And that's all we do. We just create the pod. Once we've created our pod, then we need to create the template for that custom post type. And what we need to do here is to match the fields. We have to match the fields to the Google Sheets. So we then upload the data, the CSV, the CSV file that, that we created. All right. But just to go back one slide, here we create the template of the fields that we're going to use. We upload the data, and then we then match the fields. Okay, so this is the template that we create. For example, website, description, title, reviews, anything you want. And then when you upload the data, you simply match the fields. All right, basic stuff, you just match them. Once you've matched those fields, then you upload, and that's it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I always recommend doing this on a test website, um, you know, just to make sure that it all works correctly. And then upload it, it's not complicated, you'll get it. So in, in indexation, this is my expertise, and this is this is what I do. So indexation means means basically it, it's a part of SEO. It's getting your content into Google, because the issue at the moment is every single day, you know, millions, trillions of words of content are being produced. Google will not index it. Okay, it has to be unique, and it has to be interesting, and it has to add value. Okay, so, so what we've done is we downloaded data from Google. So why should Google now index content that we've simply taken from there? Well, we're going to figure that one out. So, so some ideas to get the site. If it's a fresh domain, 
that Google knows nothing about. It won't trust you for, it could be one week or it could be one year. It won't trust you. But ways to get your website indexed and online and getting traffic is, here are the top, top five tips. So one, um, to create Google Search Console accounts in GA4, and then submit your sitemap to Google Search Console. Submit the home page to an indexer tool, like Omega Indexer, which is a very nice tool to get content indexed. You can submit the home page to you know, Reddit or Twitter, uh, because very, very simply, Reddit gets crawled millions and millions of times by Google Bot. So that's, it, it's not going to hurt. Try and get backlinks. That's going to work. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. And then another good idea is to create a press release, which you can get from Fiverr uh, or Legit, these two services. This, this can cost like $30, and it's a very nice way to get the site indexed. Also, this is another way of getting the site uh, working in each of these. Go and buy a website with traffic, which you can buy. You can, uh, a very good place to buy them is uh, Facebook groups. Um, Empire, this is typically very expensive. These, these are you know, five, ten, twenty thousand dollars to buy a website with traffic. But on Facebook groups, Discord channels, people are selling their sites. A lot of people give up with their business. Okay, well that's where we can jump in and then take that. If, as long as it's in our niche, we can buy that website, put it in our directory, and this is one way to get traffic. So let's just talk about SEO because this is my uh, a specialization. It's really not that complicated. Right? A lot of people overthink it and they, they try and get really creative and crazy ideas and so on. It's not that difficult. And the reason why I put the, the cards up here is because it, it's, it's like playing poker. But the difference is I can see your cards and you can see my cards. Why? Because the search results, this gives you the answers. All of the answers are here. Plus, I can look at your code, I can look at your backlinks, I can look at the frequency of the keywords, I can look at the types of keywords, etc. The very simple way of doing this is like this. Can you honestly put your hand on your heart and say, I can beat number one position because I have better content? If the answer is yes, go for it. You'll probably win. If you feel that you can't, like if you're competing for Amazon, you know, sneakers, okay, it's, it's not gonna work, don't bother with it. One, one tip is this, if your query that you're interested in has an answer by Quora or Reddit, then that's good news. That means that you can probably win that position. Um, it's just my personal belief. Okay, so let's get back to our directory um, website. So, the other, technique which works, which is kind of, you know, very, very 101 SEO at the moment, is what's called topical authority and content clustering. So what that means is that we just add authority to the overall concept. So this green here, for example, could be the database directory that we've built. To explain this better, this, this should explain it better. Imagine that we have, uh, this is our niche, okay? We have the Hong Kong visa immigration, lead gen pick. That's what we want to get indexed and getting traffic. So we can create content that all answers aspects to that topic. Why? Because it adds authority. And each of these can have a certain amount of... If this brings in, you know, 30 clicks a month, it doesn't... Fantastic. That's very good news. Because this brings in 30, this brings in 100, and this brings in 10. That's good. Because Google says, okay, this guy is covering all different aspects of the subject. I'm going to give them a chance, and that should definitely help. Backlinks is um, very, very important. I, some people believe that they're losing importance. I think that they maintain, as long as they're a good, a good link. So for example, a backlink from SCMP is always going to be better than Henry's JumpCruises.com, right? That's fact of the matter. There's many ways to get backlinks. Uh, frankly, you can, you can pay for them, you can do guest posts, you can do parasite linking, um, you, you can get very creative. But for the purposes of time, I, I, I won't get to all of these uh, tactics. But the thing to say about links is this, that it's a signal of popularity. It's as simple as that. The more links you have, the more basically it looks like you're a popular person and Google wants to know about you. But one link from the SEMP can be worth 100 crappy, shitty links that won't do anything. So that definitely helps with indexation. Uh, just a quick word about this: that um, you know, Google releases its um, it has to release its its patents, uh, you know, publicly. 
because that's how the patent office works. And a very, very old uh, patent was all about seed sites. So what's a seed site? The se Google, the Google bot, the, the bot that crawls the internet and indexes websites, it doesn't start at my blog and it goes all the way up and down the internet all day long. It starts at a seed site, an authoritative entity. So for example, if you're in a fashion niche, uh, Vogue.com is a highly trusted entity in fashion. So the Google bot will start its journey here, and then it will then go out and see who's linked to Vogue.com. Okay? So you want to try and be as close as possible to an authoritative website, because again, this isn't complicated stuff, it's just the closer you are to an authoritative niche specific entity, the better it is for you. Cool, so let's talk about some examples of uh, directories that I've built, and uh, there's uh, four of them. So the first one is, um, is growthhackers.hk, which, uh, which is a, a kind of a, which is an SEO agency that I used to manage about three or four years ago. And everything that I've told you about, with that scraping and spinning and re-uploading, it worked really well. So the top page, all of these screenshots are from this morning and last night. The top page is this Hong Kong SEO agency's directory. And currently the keywords with this domain are Hong Kong SEO company, SEO company Hong Kong, Hong Kong SEO, blah, 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 okay? And all I did was I just scraped everyone else's directories, I spun the content, and I re-uploaded it. So last night, um, so this tool is quite interesting because not, you see, Google is always testing. It doesn't just give you position three and good luck to you. It doesn't work like that. It's constantly, it's, con it's constantly testing different results. So for example, uh, so this tool has 10 IP addresses. So there's you know, one person in Lantau, one person in Saikun, three people in Central, and then it finds the average. So for Hong Kong SEO company, um, most people saw me in position two, some people saw me in position three. Um, the desktop uh, Hong Kong SEO, the website which I built using this directory, some, um, a few people saw me in position one and, one, and a few people position four, and so on. You get the idea, okay? It's all about volatility. So, so this, this website here, seohero.io, Google's not sure what to do. For some people position two, some people position 11. So anyway, this is another discussion. I'm just showing you this because it works. The point here is it works. And there's a screenshot of, um, of this. I'm not showing this to show off or impress or anything like that, because the truth is, I honestly, I've done nothing to this website for one year. I haven't touched it, I haven't written any content, I've done nothing, and it's still very high in the search engines for Hong Kong SEO. So, you know, again, all I'm doing is validating a theory that this works. Um, now, will it work forever? No, definitely not, because Google is constantly doing different um, algorithm uh, changes all the time. Um, and I'll talk about this in a second. But anyways, what works today will not necessarily work tomorrow. However, this has stayed consistent, so it's a good tactic. Another example is typhoon.hk. Um, I got the domain because I just think it sounds cool, for any reason. Um, and I did exactly the same thing. Again, identical process with the same tools and all of that. And um, so one example of the niche in that website is drone shops in Hong Kong. And um, so 10 people see me in position one for drone shops in Hong Kong. So it, it's even above the DJI.com website, which is Britain, even above Fortress. So again, it works. Um, mobile repair shop, uh, three people see me um, here in position five. And look at this guy, he's even got a website devoted to phone, phonerepair.hk.com. And I'm beating him with this tactic. And then crack mobile phone screen in Hong Kong, same thing. Right at the top. Uh, another example is this Korean, this is just a kind of weird test I was doing, but it's called getmekimchi.com, and it's, an, it's a mass page website which is targeting the US. It's on a US uh, hosting. And you see the structure is very, very nice and clean. This is the kind of thing which Google loves. It's just so, make Google bots life easy. Make it really, really easy to understand your content, and you'll never go wrong with this. So, so this website is, um, if you type in Korean stores in Texas, um, it does pretty well. 
And this content is, is I, haven't, I haven't touched this for about two years, and still, this is only like uh, yesterday, and it's still doing, you know, I, you know, okay. And this content is not even AI, it's, it's horrible, it's, it doesn't even make any sense. Um, but it's, they're ranked, you know. Um, okay, so, will this work in 2024? Um, yeah, yeah, kind of, I've got to be a bit careful. It really depends on, on the niche you're in, because there's been a lot of updates um, like every single week, Google will kind of tweak the, the algorithm. It won't announce it, it'll just do it. But it does it does announce the core updates, which are exactly what we think that is. They're the big important updates. But one thing which I believe, and I do SEO all day long, is that I just believe that this helpful content update, this is gonna become more important next year because of the amount of AI that's been generated. So that's really important to, to talk about. This is interesting. So with the algorithm updates, uh, Google gives you some documentation. And in January of this year, Google said um, that we want to see helpful content written by, by people, by human beings, for people. This is in January. In September, they changed their tune. Now it's helpful content created for people, okay, not by people. So now they're beginning to say, OK, we can work with AI, but it's got to be helpful and it's got to be useful. That's the important thing. So, I think I spoke about this earlier, but you know, we want to remove that because this, this is my personal opinion. We want to remove that footprint of AI using that tool like Quillbot or a paraphraser, just to make it more human. And this is really big. This human verification. So, what's human verification? Well, human verification is called it's called EEAT, which is expertise. Uh, experience, expertise, authority, and trust, right? What is that? That is this. It's, it's human verification. Because a human being, it can't, go on a, it can't go on holiday. They can't buy a handbag. They can't do any of that. We can. And typically, a human likes to read about another human's experience for obvious reasons. So this is really important for your content. In any business that you do, with any aspect of digital marketing, to get it in there. So how do we do this? So how do we do this, EEAT? Again, not that complicated. If you have, ideally, you have a real human working on your brand, all right? And ideally, hopefully, that human has citations and credibility online. So for example, if Sally Jones is a human being that's written an article, if they've written for Sad Channel Morning, but all they've been quoted, or they have a reference, or Forbes, or LinkedIn, so for example, I'm now on WordCamp Hong Kong website. This is really good because it means that I can link to that. So Google knows that I am a real human being and it will connect the dots. It will connect the dots and it will give you the benefit. And that means that you can beat, that can beat, you can beat your competitor by doing this human um, association. You can also use schema, which I'm sure you will know about, which is a little bit of code, which tells Google, hey, this is, this is, this, 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 these words are a, human being's name. Um, so SGE, SGE is a search generative experience, which um, like Thailand, in Thailand, this, this was launched in Thailand uh, two days ago. So it's, it's, it's rolling all around the world, and this is going to change everything. Um, or not, it really depends you know, on many, many things. But what are the challenges for all of us in this room, if we have digital assets, which I'm sure we all do, is that first off, one of the thick fears is zero clicks, because if I get the answer, what's the point of me going to your website? Um, okay, but this it's slightly another subject for another time. But in summary, so far, the concept and the method that I've shared, it works today, and it should be okay for you. And the final thing I'll say is that it really, really depends on the niche that you're in. The more kind of long tail and unique it is, then the more that your directory can actually add value to the conversation and um, you should do okay. That's it. Okay. Any, uh, any, any, any questions or anything I can help with? Could you tell us more about the long tail? Uh, 
Yeah, could you tell us about the long tail uh, humorous? Sure. And why, why you said it's had more value to the conversation? What does it mean for the conversation? Yeah, do? okay. So, like to add more value to the conversation, because it, cause it's a good question, because if you think about it, okay, AI, right, and AI content, people are simply taking existing content and they're just, they're just basically doing, writing the same article. For example, top 10 junk trips in Hong Kong, right? It's the same concept. Adding value means introducing new concepts and new ideas to the conversation. That's, that's much more interesting. Um, so the, the directory piece idea that I've shown Maybe it's not enough to simply just write content about the business. Maybe just try and you know, contribute to that conversation and say that these 10 agencies are similar because of this reason. They are pioneering AI in Hong Kong, which has these results for that industry. In summary, what I'm trying to say is just add value to the conversation. Make it interesting, make it more human. As for long tails, long tail, in my opinion, has a lot more um, clickability and intent. Because if you rank for, you know, um, hotels in Hong Kong, for example, it's no. Forget that example. If you do like car hire in, in Hong Kong, it, it, it's okay. But if you rank for car car hire in Lantau or, or car hire in in um, Shenwan, for example, that's someone who wants to hire a car in that place. So there's more intent. Thanks, Thanks everyone.